Hey, so today we're going to be talking about conditional probability and combinations. Now you've probably done these in previous years if you can remember. So conditional probabilities and given that probability questions which I'll explain. And combinations is that sort of C. Uh, you might even have done it early this year. So you have C, 5, 2 or something like that. But the reason why I haven't sort of called a revision is because even though you've done it in previous years, these are directly accessible later years and they often are part of an exam question. So to begin, conditional probability. So what is it? So to begin in words, conditional probability is basically the probability of something given that something else has occurred. So this is much more uh, real life scenario compared to other probability questions. So you could say the probability of passing a test given that you passed the last test, or the probability of passing a test given that you failed the previous one. So what happens is that the way you write it is this, the probability of A given that B. So that's a straight line there. So the probability of A given that B, and remember these are just subsets. So you can s insert any type of word. So we could have said the probability of rain given that it rained yesterday there are a wide range so you could put any of those in so the important part of conditional probability is being able to identify that it actually is a conditional probability question so here is a formula so the probability of a given that b equals the probability of A intersection B over the probability of B. So to remember this, you think probability of A given that B. So it goes across this way. That makes logical sense because that's what you're talking about. Now the given that B part, this is the one that you then have the probability on the bottom. And then obviously you have the intersection. So copy that formula down to make sure you know it. So to give an example without a situation, I'll give one of those in a later specific example because the questions take quite a while. But I'll say the probability of A equals 0 0.3 and the probability of B is 0 0.4 the probability of A intersection B equals 0 0.1. So as I said, this could be any example. The probability that you play soccer at lunchtime is 0 0.3. The probability that you have a maths lesson is 0 0.4. And the probability that you play soccer and have a maths lesson is 0 0.1. So there is a relationship between them. So. What you do is you just plug in the numbers. The probability of A, given that B has occurred, is the probability of A into section B. So I'll just write that down. Over probability of B. And so that equals 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.4. So you could just go 1 over 4, which is the same as 0 0.25, 25%. So you can see that the probability of A occurring is less than 0 0.3. So it means that once B has occurred, or if B, given that B has occurred, the probability of A then goes down. So that's an important concept, and even though the formula is relatively easy to apply. Another quick thing is independent events. We talked about them. They, if you remember, they are when one event does not affect the other. So if one occurs, then the other, uh, it doesn't change the probability of the other occurring. So that means conditional probability, if you have the probability of A given that B and they're independent events, then the given that shouldn't affect it, such as A could be buying a new computer and B could be catching the train to the city they possibly could not be connected at all. 
So what happens there is you have the probability of A intersection B over the probability of B. Now if you remember, the formula for independent events is the probability of A intersection B equals the probability of A times the probability of B. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to sub that in. So you have this here, you have this here, I'm going to sub that in that there. So this equals the probability of A times the probability of B over the probability of B. These cancel. If they, they could actually give numbers, so let's say 0 0.5 times 0 0.1 over 0 0.1, that makes sense because the 0 0.1s would cancel. So now these cancel and we've just got the probability of A. So we could say that for independent events, the probability of A, given that B has occurred, is just a probability of A, which makes sense because the whole definition of independent events is that what if B occurs or not, it doesn't affect A. So now going on to combinations. So combinations are ways of identifying how many, it's basically ordering different sets of numbers, typically numbers, and working out how many different possibilities they, there are, given that order doesn't matter. So you represent it by NCR, which can also be sometimes written as this. So they're the same thing. And you should have already previously done it uh, in earlier chapters when you've been working out the exponentials. For example, if you have to expand like x plus 3, 4, then you've probably already done it where you've had like 4, 0, sort of x to the 4, dot, 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 dot. But it does relate to probability. So when you, when you have two numbers that says 5C2, what this represents is if you have five numbers, so we could have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you are selecting two, you're ordering two, and it doesn't matter what order they're in, so you're just selecting two numbers at random, then there is 5C2 number of possibilities. So I could give you some, I could have 1, 2, I could have 1, 3, I could have 1, 4, I could have 3, 5, etc. But how many possibilities do I have? So this 2 here represents how many groups. So at the moment I'm getting two numbers each. And up here, this 5 represents the set, the, the pool I'm grouping from. So you can sort of think about that as yeah, the set or the sample space as we've previously talking, talked about. So no, how does this 5C2 work? 5C2 equals 5 exponential, no, not exponential, 5 factorial, 2, 3. So the actual formula, so I'll just get some more room. Is that NCR equals N over N minus R, R dash, uh, R, exclamation mark. So this equals 5 factorial over 2 factorial times 3 factorial, which equals 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 3 times 2 times 1 times 2 times 1. So we see that's the 2. And that's the 3. Now, these cancel. 
and you're left with 5 times 4 over 2 times 1, which would equal 20 over 2, which would equal 10. So, if we had five different, for example, people, we are grouping two of them, so you're putting into the pairs, there are 10 different pairs that you could, could come up with. So you could list them out, but this is an easy way to doing it, especially when it's bigger numbers, it makes it a lot easier rather than trying to list them all. So in relation to probability, the main one is, if you remember, when they're equally likely to, the probability equals the number of favorable, so the, the number of favorable over the number total. So this could be, you could either use common combinations for the number of favorable or the number of total. If you're picking, for example, pairs, then the total number of possibilities could be 10. And if your number of favorable pairs was, let's say, 3, then you could know that the probability of one of those favorable pairs occurring would be 3 on 10. So I'll give an example. So we have a bag of marbles. And we have four red and three green. Now we're picking two. simultaneously. What is the probability of both red? Now you can do this another way previously such as a tree diagram and I encourage you to try and do it that way as well. It is often simpler. However, this is using combinations. So what I can do is I can think about the probability of both red. So picking two simultaneously. So I'm going to do it as the probability, the, sorry, the number of favorable outcomes over the total number. So firstly, the number of favorable. This is going to be, C, 4, 2. Because there are four red marbles and I'm picking two. So how many different uh, combinations are there? The total, I'm picking from seven marbles, and I'm picking two marbles. And it doesn't matter what order, so I said it's the probability of both red. Um, the probability of a red and a green. I'm not saying probability of first marble you pick out being green, and the second one you pick out red. As I said, you're doing it simultaneously. So if I work out 4C2, that is just 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 2 times 1 times 2 times 1. These cancel, gives you 12 on 2, which equals 6. To work out 7C2, that's 7 times dot dot dot, over 2 times 1 times 5 times dot dot dot. So the 5 times 4 times 3 times 1 cancel for the 5 times 4 times 3 times 1. Then we get 7 by 6 over 2, which equals, so it's a 6, seven times six over two, which gives you 42 over two, which equals 21. So it's about to rub it off. So probability of both red would be six over 21. Uh, I'll post, in regards to conditional probability, I'll post another video with a more complicated example that is more likely to see on the screen. But whenever you see probability questions, always make sure, is it a given that question? And then if it is, use that formula I've just given you. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you next time.